Hey guys, Eric here from worshipbanduniversity.com and today we're going to take a look at how to export a track that we've created. Now down here, I already have a Q track that I created uh, in the last video. So what I need to do now is to export it so that I can put it in a folder and then I can pull it up anytime while making a set list. So first thing you want to do is I'm going to zoom out on this a little bit so I can see the whole song and I'm going to highlight the entire Q track. Now I don't know if you really need to do this but sometimes I haven't done it or the marker was in a different spot or something like that and it just didn't work. <laughs> so what uh, I always do now is I basically highlight the whole track that I made whether it's a guitar track, piano track, or again just a Q track then I'm gonna go into exporting the file. So again I don't know if this is overkill or not but I do that every time and it's been working for me good. So now what I'm gonna do is go up to file and export audio. Once that happens, you're going to have this little screen pull up here. Now these should basically be the defaults on your computer. Um, but again, if you want to double check them with what I have over here, that'd be great just to make sure. Uh, the most important thing is the file type. We want to make sure it is a WAV file. Then what we do is go, we go up to render track to basically find what we want to save it as. Now the master track, that basically saves it as one file where all the cues and the loops are panned to the left and then all the track stuff that I make is panned to the right. This is great uh, if you're, let's say, using an iPod or your iPhone or something like that to play tracks off of through your headphone jack. Um, basically by splitting it to the left and right, it's splitting it between the left and the right channels. So if you have a, uh, a headphone jack that goes into a splitter of a stereo out, uh, again, you can send that to the sound guy so you can have you know the click on the left and then the, uh, the other stuff on the right. Or even, too, with this track, if you want to save it, you can upload it right to Planning Center or something like that so that uh, your, your band can actually listen to the track, again, with the clicks in one ear and all the tracks and stuff on the right, and they can practice along with it, too. So that's actually a really great thing to do is saving it as your master track. I can also do all individual tracks. Now, again, in this, I really only have two tracks. I have the Audio 1, which is basically MP3 that I imported and then the LCQ pack, which is basically the cues that I made. So if I was to use that and save it, I would have those two files separated on there. Select the tracks only. Works great if you have a bunch of tracks going on. Again, if I have, let's say, 10 tracks where I have a guitar, piano, bass, drums, all that other stuff, and I just want to export some of them, I can do that as well by doing this, and then after that, selecting the ones I want. Audio 1 will only uh, send out the MP3, which I really don't need. Um, but what I do want is to export my Q pack, which is basically all the cues that I made. So now I'm going to go down to export and save it. Now the way I'm going to save this is I'm first going to put the name of the song, which is more. Then in these little brackets here, I'm going to put what I'm doing. So basically I'm making and exporting the cues. Right after that, we're going to put 140, which is the beats per minute of the song. Now this is the basic format that I use. Uh, loopcommunity.com always saves things in this format uh, just to make it a little bit easier to uh, to pull up and even read on the side over here when you were dragging into your folders and stuff. Um, even too, loopcommunity.com is great because you can make some tracks and uh, upload it to their site so you can actually make some money off it and sell it, but you need to do it in this format. So again, pretty much as a rule of thumb, this is the format I use by doing the song name, what it is, again, cues in this case, could be guitar, could be vocals, something like that, and then the BPM. Then I'm just going to click on save. Now I'm not going to do that now because it does take a little while and I don't want to waste some time. So I'm going to cancel that and cancel this. But what should happen is I'm going to have these two tracks come up just like this. We have our uh, the more cues uh, ASD file and the more cues wave. So what we're going to then do is make a new folder. And uh, I basically organize mine like this. I put the name of the song, dash, and then I put uh, the name of the band, which would be liquid music in this case. And then I'm going to drag both of these guys right into here. And then I'm going to drag those into my Ableton tracks. Now again, I actually did this a little earlier because I do we do play the song. So I'm going to hit stop over here and just kind of forget about it. But let's pretend that I did that over here. So when I open the folder, I'll have my cues in there. Um, but earlier I had actually the uh, the track that's on there too as well. So that's why I have that track there too. Um, but again, you can basically export those to pull them up at any time to make a set list. So again, have some fun with this. Uh, again, make a bunch of tracks and make sure you export them the correct way. 
Uh, otherwise, they won't work. So uh, if you guys got any questions, please email me. Um, or we're going to review the videos again. Go to loopcommunity.com. Maybe check out some of their videos as well. But again, have some fun and good luck.